Hello and welcome to lesson four. These tutorials are specifically for uh, people who are blind or partially sighted uh, to enable them to learn the DG Melodion. So I'm going to talk about the basses today. Those are the things on the left hand side of the instrument. The basses are set out in pairs for your convenience. So we're on the left hand side of the instrument. We've got our hand through the bass strap and our four fingers are curled round and should be able to locate the two rows of four buttons, so eight in all. So the outside row, the row uh, nearest the left hand side if you like, uh, button number four, that's the one nearest to your lap, nearest to your knees, nearest the floor if you like. Uh, if you uh, press that button and push in, you've got a G bass and if you do the same thing and pull out, you've got a D bass. If you come to the button above that, uh, button number three, and remember we count down from the top of the instrument to the bottom, Button number three on the push gives us G chord and a D chord on the pull. So what I'm trying to say to you here is that the, the buttons are set out in pairs for your convenience. G bass and G chord are on buttons four and three. D bass and D chord are also on buttons four and three, obviously on the pull. So on the push we get G bass and G chord, on the pull we get D bass and D chord. So the idea here is that you've got the chord and then you've got the bass note underneath it, you see? Uh, let's move up to uh, buttons two and one. So button two on the push is uh, D bass, a different D bass, and the button above that button number one on the push is the D chord, see? So they're, again, they're on top of each other. And if I pull out the same buttons, two and one, outside row, I've got A bass and A chord. So D bass and D chord, A bass and A chord. If I go to the inside row now, this is the row that's nearest to the bellows, uh, Buttons four and three give me C bass and C chord on the push and the pull. And then if we come up to uh, buttons two and one on the inside row, we've got um, B bass. And I've got B minor chord. Yours might be a B major chord on the push. And on the pull, I've got E bass and E minor chord. So again, on top of each other, the bass note, the chord, all set out very conveniently. Now, obviously, what I'm playing there is what we call um pa. Um is the bass, and the pa is the chord. So if your piece of music has got two beats of the bar, obviously that works really well. One, two, one, two. If it's got four beats in the bar, it also works really well. Um pa, um pa. One, two, three, four. And if your piece of music is a waltz, three beats of the bar, you do one um and two pa's. Um pa, pa, um. Pa, pa, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can always play the bass note and the chord together. You don't always have to play uh, that um, pa, or um, pa, pa. So here I'm going to play a G bass and a G chord together. And pull out to get D bass and D chord together. And that can be really nice in certain circumstances. Now we've already talked about the right hand and the way it's laid out in the two rows, the G row and the D row. And the pushes being in the main the notes found in the major chord of that row and the pull notes being in the main the notes that aren't in that major chord. What about the left hand? Is there any logic behind it or is it just a random jumble of notes and chords? Well no of course not. The idea with this layout of the left hand is to have a set of bass note and chord buttons conveniently placed so that we can play tunes in the two major keys of the rows i.e. G major and D major plus a few other keys as well, although without such a palette of notes and chords to call upon. And obviously the idea ultimately is we've got all the basic accompanying bass notes and chords at our disposal. So before we get into this, we have to decide what we mean when we say the key of a tune, the key of a song. This is a guide as to what notes and chords we're going to play in that tune, a kind of musical menu if you like. So if we say that we're in the key of G major, we know that pretty much everything we play in both hands is going to be based on the scale of G major. Just to remind you of what that sounds like. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Similarly, if we're in the key of D major, we know that pretty much everything we play is going to be based on the scale of D major, which sounds like this. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. The chords built on the first, fourth and fifth degrees of the major scale 
are the most used for simple folk and pop tunes. Uh, these are the chords we look for first and the melodeon is very well organised in this regard as far as the two row keys are concerned and to a lesser extent some other keys as well. For quickness we call these chords the 1, 4 and 5 chords. Here are the first five notes, the first five degrees. G, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, well, if I just do the pushes on those buttons, uh, on this third button starting instrument, it's buttons three, five and six. If I play those together on the push, that is a chord of G. So a chord of G major is G, B and D. And that is the chord built on the first, the one chord. So the chord of G major in the scale of G major is called the one chord, made up of G, B and D. Now the four chord in G major is built on the fourth note of the scale. If I go G, A, B, C, that note there, which is on this instrument, button four on the pull. If I play that note C, the major chord built on the fourth of the scale, uh, which is C major, that is the four chord. So G major is the one chord, C major is the four chord, and the fifth note of the scale you remember is D. Let's do that. One, two, three, four, five. There's the fifth note of the scale, which is D. If I play a D major chord, <clears throat> starting with the note D, uh, that is the five chord. So G major is the one chord, C major is the four chord, D major is the five chord. Now it's much easier to find these chords on the left hand side. You may remember that button number three on the outside row on the push is the G major. Button number three on the inside row, either on the pull or the push, is the C major chord, the four chord. And we can get D, the D major, the five chord, either on button number three on the pull or button number one on the push. So the one chord is G, the four chord is C and the five chord is D. So a typical three chord trick in the key of G major. I'm going to play the bass note and the chord. So G, C, D and back to G. One, four and five. G is the one chord, C is the four chord, D is the five chord. A typical kind of sequence you'd find in loads and loads of tunes. Similarly in the key of D major, the D major chord is the one chord, uh, the G major chord is the four chord and the A major chord is the five chord because D is the first degree of the scale, G is the fourth degree of the scale and A is the fifth degree of the scale. And on the melodeon we've got, well we've already dealt with the D major haven't we and the G major, it's just a matter of where the A major is and it's on buttons two and one on the outside row on the pull. That's A. So let's play um, a three chord trick in the key of D major. So I'm going to play buttons uh, two and one outside row pushing to get D major. I'm going to go down to buttons four and three still pushing to get G major. That's the four chord. Come back to buttons two and one and pull out to get the five chord which is A. So we've got D major, G major, A major, back to D major. So that's the same thing but in a different key. So here's our 1, 4 and 5 sequence in the key of D. So D major, G major, that's the 4, A major, that's the 5, back to D major and that's the 1. So you can hear, can't you? That's a very typical pattern you've heard loads and loads of times in folk music or pop music. With the key of G major, okay, that's the key of the inside row, right hand side. Remember the row nearest the bellows and nearest the uh, grill is the G row. Now the chords that go with G major is actually very handy because if you find your bass buttons on the left hand side and just find button four on the outside row and button four on the inside row and button three on the outside row and button three on the inside row, you've got all the buttons you need on that little group of um, four buttons to get everything you need for G major. 
because G major is buttons uh, four and three on the push. Uh, that's the one chord. C major is buttons uh, four and three, either on the push or the pull on the inside row. And uh, D major, D bass and D chord, they're on buttons four and three on the uh, outside row on the pull. So everything you need is on that bottom cluster of four buttons. So one chord, G, that's on the outside row. C chord, which is the four chord, and that's on the inside row. And then the five chord, the D, is on the outside row again. But it's all buttons four and three. Now you've got a choice for both the C chords and the D chords. And whether you play them on the push or the pull depends on what you're playing with the right hand. And that will all become a lot clearer when we actually uh, go to play some tunes. So in the key of G major, the likely chord sequence would be, like I say, one, four, and five, a G, a C, a D, and then maybe back to G. Or you might include what we call the relative minor, which is E minor. So you play G, and then you come over to uh, the inside row on the pull, that's E minor, then you go back to your C, your four chord, and D five chord. That E minor is the sixth chord, it's built on the sixth of the scale. So you've got the one called G, the sixth called E minor, the four called C, and the five called D. I'll play that without talking all over it. A very typical four chord sequence. And sometimes you might play a G, that's the one chord, and then you might play the A, which is the two chord, and then go to the C, the four chord, and then D, the five chord. So you've got G, A, C, D, like that. A more likely chord than A would be A minor, but we don't actually have an A minor. We have an A minor seventh, but we don't have an A minor. So an A is a chord that does crop up quite a lot in this key. Let's talk about the key of D major now in terms of uh, likely chord sequences. So like I said, the one, four, and the five, the D on the push, the G on the push, that's the four, the A on the pull, that's the five, and back to the D, the one. Now, if like me, your button one inside row on the push is tuned to B minor, we can get the relative minor of, uh, of this key as well. So we've got D on the push, and then B minor on the push. That's buttons two and one inside row. So that's the uh, six chord. And then you've got G, uh, which is the four chord. And then A, which is the five chord. So that, that talking over it. might be able to hear that that's exactly the same thing as going in the key of G. That was the same sequence but in a different key. So G major and D major are our main two keys obviously because this instrument is you know built to play in those keys. If you want to play in different keys you can of course by different melodians. This is a DG you can get a CF, you can get a B flat, E flat, you can get an AD, uh, and you can get three row melodians, you know, it, it goes on and on. You can also play in the key of C in a limited kind of way. You haven't got a four chord, you haven't got an F chord, but you have got C and you've got G. So you've got the one and five chords. Now some chords are common to both keys. Uh, so what are they? Well, in both G major and D major, you've got G major, B minor, D major and E minor. G major is the first of G and the fourth of D. B minor is the third of G and the sixth of D. D major is the fifth of G and the first of D. And E minor is the sixth of G and the second of D. I know it all sounds very complicated, but just make sure that you can do the three chord trick in the two row keys. So in uh, G major that you can do G, C, and D. And try doing that with 
uh, C on the pull, C on the push, try doing it with D on the pull, D on the push. And in the key of D major, uh, the three chord trick. <laughs> Again, they try doing it with the D bass and the D chord on the push and on the pull. So I hope you found that interesting and I hope you know now you feel like you're really, really ready to start playing your first tune. You've got a lot of, of knowledge now and uh, all that kind of foundation has been laid and we can build upon it. Thank you very much for listening and you'll hear from me very soon.